Okay, yeah, we can do some recognition. Sorry. Uh, why don't you start? Go ahead. Uh, first, we have uh, jo Justin's uh, Renaissance Find Your Grind. We had 14 students who attended that, and um, we had a student, Aaron, um, Aaron Field, who was awarded a $2,500 scholarship. And then um, because of that, North Kingstown High School was also awarded uh, the same amount, $2,500, to be used to improve school culture. Next, we have the uh, high school symphonic band. In, the, in late January, 11 um, NKHS symphonic band students were selected to perform in the 2018 Southern New England Honors Band. And at the performance, senior Cameron Ostagai was chosen as a recipient of a $2,000 scholarship from the URI Music Department. Uh, next, we had uh, DECA. On Friday, March 2nd, 46 high school students and members of NK's DECA Business Club chapter completed in, uh, competed excuse me, in the statewide Career Development Con Conference. Out of the 46 students from NK, 29 earned first, second, and third place positions. And so we have uh, students that will be heading to Atlanta, Georgia. And um, as a result of that, People's Credit Union has generously offered to sponsor uh, part of that uh, uh, trip and the team with $1,000. And so we're very grateful for your partnership. Thank you. I, I'd also like to mention at our last meeting, um, we had the Retirements announced of uh, Ruth Ann Logan and Karen Seitler. Ruth Ann uh, Logan is the principal at Davidson Middle School and Karen Seitler at Fishing Cove. And I just wanted to recognize them. And um, I can't think of two you know, better leaders in, in North Kingston over the years. Um, Ms. Logan uh, started at Wickford Elementary, remember that school? Um, and worked her way to uh, Davisville Middle. And Karen Seitler has been uh, with us for seven years at Fishing Cove. Wish them all the best and uh, uh, thank them so much for their commitment to uh, leadership in NK. And speaking of leadership in NK, um, I want to recognize our own Josh Narona, who is our school committee representative and also the head of our student government at North Kingston High School. And I asked him if he could say a few words on behalf of the students um, in, in the walkout that was um, put together yesterday in North Kingston. Sure, so as many of you know, uh, yesterday was the National School Walkout um, in response to the, uh, the shooting in Parkland, Florida. Um, that was a month ago yesterday where uh, 17 people died. So yesterday what we did, we organized a school-wide walkout where we left school at 10 a.m. Um, we went outside for 17 minutes and we were silent um, and we had signs and we went around on the school and we just kind of joined the national movement to show that we were fed up with the school violence and we were fed up um, with, with these senseless acts of violence that keep getting in the way of people's education in elementary, middle, high schools <coughs> all over the country. Um, so it, was, it went really well. Um, a lot of people participated. It was really pretty moving. Um, there's something about being out, you know, outside with probably, uh, well, I don't know how many people, but many hundreds of silent high schoolers who clearly really care about something and are passionate for change. Um, so it went really well. Um, and you know, obviously this is not the end. Um, the first step to anything is raising awareness and to show that we care um, like we did yesterday and like people um, across the state and country did. Um, so there's more to do, but this was our first step and I think it went really, really well. Very proud of you. And I, I want to congratulate you uh, on, on organizing that and working very well with, with the administration. And there are two ways to do that type of thing, um, but you went about it the right way. Uh, and, and I just want to let you know that I think uh, you speak for the administration. Yeah, and and thank um, you for that. coordinating with uh, the North Kingstown Police Department, they were very concerned about you know this type of an event being outside at a prearranged time, that kind of thing. So um, a really nice <laughs> community effort all around. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, so um, next on to the presentations.
Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I am going to uh, start off the presentation on our world language programming, and with me tonight is Mark DeLucia, who is the um, high school department chair of the world language department, and uh, Dr. Barbara Moss, who is the assistant uh, principal for teaching and learning at the high school. So I'm going to present a little bit of the research, and then following that, uh, Mr. Delish is going to talk about our cu current programming in NK as well as in uh, several Rhode Island districts. And then uh, Dr. Moss is going to continue with um, certifications in, in, the, uh, in our uh, town as well as the state and also class enrollments. And then I'll pick it up again um, uh, following that. Okay, so the very first thing is that um, we have research from, this is from Job Market, the new uh, American Economy 2017 report, and it tells us that the demand for bilingual workers in the United States has more than doubled in recent years. Employers are increasingly looking for workers who can speak Chinese, Spanish, Arabic, as well as other languages, obviously. There is a growing need for bilingual workers at both the low and higher ends of the skilled spectrum. Back in 2006, there was a lot of uh, work done around the issue of foreign language and the opportunities that we could provide for students. And so I'd like to read this quote to you. To confront the 21st century challenges to our economy and national security, our education system must be strengthened to increase the foreign language skills and cultural awareness of our students. America's continued global leadership will depend on our students' abilities to interact with the world community, both inside and outside our borders. <coughs> But then coming from Languages for All, the article from 2014, despite this rising chorus of testimony, our education system seems unable to find the will or the resources to effectively and efficiently make foreign language education an essential part of our children's preparation for life in the 21st century. And before I continue, I just want to say that uh, we had a committee that worked together to research um, and try to determine the status of our programming. Um, we were tasked um, by, from the school committee and the superintendent to see if we could investigate um, world language programming starting earlier than high school. Uh, we have it currently in the, starting at 8th grade and going through high school, so we wanted to look to see if there would be a feasibility of um, starting earlier. Um, that being earlier in the middle school and possibly earlier in the elementary school. Um, we also wanted to, they asked us to look to see if our programming, our current programming, was su sustainable um, and any proposals that we make that they be sustainable and, if possible, cost neutral. So that's what our task was. We had some members of the foreign language department or world language um, contribute uh, and participate on the committee. They were Dave Aubin, Adam LaLiberty, uh, Lynn Pinch, and Mary Ann Corning. Okay, so now um, I would like to frame this a little bit around some of the local um, work that we've done, and that the first, the first thing being the NEASC report that the high school experienced in 2013. And there were commendations from that report that are related to this very topic. The first one is the comprehensive curriculum offerings, including a strong AP program and a wide selection of elective courses and co-curricular opportunities was a recommendation. So we were commended for providing this type of programming, which we have. The comprehensiveness of program and services that address the various needs of the NKHS, um, excuse me, NKHS students. Um, so those were two commendations from NIAS. The next thing is our strategic plan um, in the state. And the state has a, a goal, goal number four, that um, speaks specifically to globally competent graduates. And it says, Rhode Island aspires to become a state in which all of our high school graduates are globally competent and prepared for the global labor market. All of our graduates will be ready to investigate the world, 
recognize the perspectives of others, communicate their ideas to diverse audiences, and take actions to improve conditions in our world. Preparing our students to be global citizens requires building the cultural competence of students and educators and expanding student access to dual language and world language instruction. In addition, our own strategic plan for NK reads as follows. Our mission is to educate our students to become intellectually active students, adults, to inspire them to reach individual excellence and to challenge them to become responsible, contributing members, members of a global society. I remember in particular when we did a major edit to our plan and global became an important um, addition to the plan. With the help and engagement of our staff, families, and community members, our students will attain the skills, strategies, and knowledge necessary to be prepared for their career, college and career choices, and ultimately their roles in a global society. And this comes from um, sort of the major kind of textbook, major resource um, for world language instruction and it's called Language and Learners Making the Match, and this is from the 2016 edition. And it says, one of the most important factors influencing the development of language proficiency is the amount of time spent in working with the language. When language learning begins earlier, it can go on longer and provide more practice and experience, leading ultimately to greater fluency and effectiveness. So at this point, um, Mr. Delucci is going to uh, explore for us what our um, current programming is and, uh, in NK and the state. Thank you, Dr. Humber. Committee members, good evening, everyone. So I'd like to start off by discussing a, a little bit of our current programming. Currently at the high school, we offer French, German, and Portuguese, levels one through four. Portuguese for honors is also a concurrent enrollment course. So what that means is that students through RIC's early enrollment program, students will actually be able to earn college credit in Portuguese for honors. In Spanish, we offer levels one through five, and we also offer two AP levels. We're very proud of that. We're actually one of the only schools in the state that offer two AP Spanish courses. Um, Mr. Naronha here is one of our students in one of those courses. And those students will actually be able to leave high school and go on to college with six college credits in Spanish by the time they graduate. As for the middle schools, both at Davisville and Whitford Middle School, all eighth graders are currently taking Spanish 1. They get a total of 135 seat hours in Spanish. Um, that excludes, of course, any students who are receiving any sort of services for literacy or ELL. Um, we have three staff members currently assigned to those two middle schools, two of whom have certifications in both French and Spanish. So, just to go over a little bit of the terminology that we'll be using as we continue with this presentation, FLES refers to foreign language in the elementary schools. This is usually an itinerant model where we would hire an itinerant teacher who would go around to the various elementary schools and it would be very similar to the music or art programs that you know and love at the elementary schools now. The dual language immersion program, also known as DLI for short, um, you may have heard of this, this is what South Kingstown has implemented at two of their three elementary schools. In this model, these students receive their regular content, but in the target language and in English. So they may spend, the elementary students may spend half their day in Spanish, that's what they have at South Kingstown, and then half their day in English. So they would receive their math instruction and English instruction in both Spanish and in English. And FLEX, which stands for Foreign Language Exploratory Programs, these you see a lot at the middle school levels. These are. Um, Students are allowed to take, say, a quarter or a semester of a different language each quarter or semester, and it just allows them to have a little bit more exposure to different languages and make informed decisions when they get to the high school on what languages they, they would like to take. So let's take a look at some of our neighbors. Um, I should say that when we did this research, we tried to restrict it to schools that were very similar to ours in terms of demographics and size, um, so we excluded Providence and Cranston and Warwick from our research. Uh, as you can see, Charho, Narragansett, and Jamestown all start in level K in kindergarten right now, um, and they offer three languages at the high school level. Jamestown, of course, is one of our feeders, um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about Jamestown here. East Greenwich is a little bit of an interesting model. They don't start until grade six, but students actually take 
a full year of either of Spanish one in grade seven and a full year of Spanish two in grade eight. So those students enter the high school at East Greenwich in Spanish three, or they can opt to start at French or Latin, and they can go on from there. So those students would be able to take basically our AP Spanish literature by their senior year. They would be prepared for that. Now on to Jamestown. Jamestown is, a, is recent with their K-4. to They hired a .4 itinerant, um, who, as I understand it right now, please correct me if I'm wrong, is an uncertified teacher who's paid at an hourly rate and meets with students for a little bit, but I do believe there are plans for that program to grow. Um, but what's really important to focus on here is the grades five through eight. Right now, Jamestown employs a graduated program where their students start in grade five, they have Spanish for once a week for 50 minutes, and grade six is twice per week, and then in grade seven and eight, it's three times per week. What that equates to is a total of 270 seat hours in Spanish before those students enter Spanish two at North Kingstown High School. That's compared with 135 seat hours in Spanish one at Davisville Middle and Redford Middle. So quite literally twice the amount of exposure to Spanish, and the expectation remains the same, that the students coming from Jamestown would be equally ready as the students coming from Davisville and Wickford for the same Spanish 2 course, and to be successful in that. So that, that number to me when I saw that was very staggering. On to a few others. Um, in SK, like I said, they have the dual language immersion program, and then they offer three languages at the high school level. Uh, Westerly and EWG also both start at the elementary levels. Smithfield does not start until grade seven, but students are offered French or Spanish at the middle at, at the middle school. So they're able to enter into either French two or Spanish two there. Uh, Barrington um, offers four languages, as we do. So if we wanted to stay put with them. Um, they do offer Mandarin Chinese, which is interesting. But as a caveat, I will say that I, through my own contacts, I know that this is through a gentleman who lives in town and offered to teach the course at the high school. Um, in my own research, I've noted that Mandarin Chinese is a little bit difficult to staff. It's difficult to find talent to staff these positions. Um, Portsmouth, uh, French, Spanish, and Portuguese, they offer three languages. And my own hometown high school, Mount Hope in Bristol and Warren, offers four languages as well, sticking with the culture of the town of Portuguese and Italian as well. Yeah. And I will now turn this over to Dr. Can Morris. Just Quick question, though. Can we jump in? Yes. Um, so, but my understanding is places like East French and that their elementary school days aren't any longer than ours, right? Correct. So, do you know what they're just because it's a zero sum game? So, what are they displacing that we're that's teaching a, now? That's an outstanding question, and I had exactly the same question. <laughs> I had exactly the same question. I imagine that should we approve this? Um, we would be tasked with looking into exactly what that would do. In Westerly, when I spoke with the department chair in Westerly, um, I know that elementary teachers were allowed common planning time when the Spanish itinerant would come in to, to instruct a Spanish course. So it's actually uh, additive then? Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. Well, also, if, um, in Charaho, I spoke to the um, assistant superintendent there the other day, and um, she said that they they do a thirty minute course a uh, thirty minute class uh, in their language at the elementary level, but then the other thirty minutes the teacher pushes in into with the classroom teacher and they do it during like um, like the morning learning center um, time like when the kids are, are doing calendar and things like that um, the world language person comes in and does related you know does the terms that the kids are doing whatever mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> right exactly. I've also been told by um, some other colleagues in other districts that once the itinerant teacher develops a good relationship with some of the other elementary teachers, those other elementary teachers may invite them in when they're doing a lesson and create sort of a pseudo dual language immersion course where they're saying, hey, I'm doing a science lesson on this, why don't you come in and do some of the terms in Spanish with the kids. So there, there, there are varying ways to work that out. So that's, that's something that and, we would need and to. And are any of these other districts at that level, you know, seven and below, grade seven and below, um, besides the, obviously the teacher using software programs or language programs as well to supplement that, or it's purely just it's pure, classroom? As, as far as I understand it, it's purely just classroom and, and teacher generated. Good evening. I get the fun part, I get the numbers. So. Um, 
right now our teacher certifications, we have 10 Spanish certified people. Nine of them are currently teaching because we have some that are dual certified or they're, for instance, an English teacher who's also certified to teach German, French, that kind of thing. Um, so we have French, uh, two certified people, one who's currently teaching French, German, two certified people, one who's currently teaching, and Portuguese, we have one certified teacher. I'm looking for the space bar. Thank you. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Oh, no. I did something really bad. You didn't expect element on Next. Oh, there it is. The side view from this is not very good. There we go. All right. Um, so we thought about sustainability. If we were to have staff within the high school leave or change, how would we be able to replace those people? What would be the sustainability of a program? So Ride provided us the information here. So you can see with French, um, not currently working, there were 17 teachers who have full initial, so they're brand new teachers coming out with new certification. Um, 28 full professional who have been in the field for a while and currently working five who have initial and 71 full professional. So there's quite a lot of um, French teachers out there. German, there are two full initial and one full professional who are not working. There are no um, German teachers with initial certification currently working, are currently working in the field. And there are four currently working for full professional and we have two of them. Portuguese, um, full initial is zero, full professional is four. Um, currently working, there are four new Portuguese teachers currently working, 23 full professionals currently working. And then you can see for Spanish, the numbers are high again, 38 teachers not working yet with their full initial, 22 full professionals not working, and then um, 51 and 280 Spanish teachers who are currently working between the initial and the full professional. So the next thing we looked at is um, what are current enrollments in our classes. So that's a breakdown. It takes two pages. So you could, this is our Spanish. The majority of our students are in the Spanish program. An interesting thing you'll note is that it, the bump in Spanish 2, and that's because we not only have the students coming from Spanish 1, but because of the strong Spanish program in our middle schools, we have a lot of students entering at the Spanish 2 level. So that's why that number is so high. And especially Jamestown contributes to that number also. Um, and for the other classes, so German right now, we have German 1 students, 48. Current, current number of students in German 2 is 12. We don't normally run class sizes that small. However, once we have a student enter the German program or any language program, because colleges require two years minimum, they prefer four years. So we try to help students um, follow that pathway. Um, French 1, the numbers are pretty steady. We have 25 in French 1 this year, 23 in French 2. Um, I think on yours there might be a typo of French 2. Yours says two sections. It should be one section. Obviously, we wouldn't have two sections with only 23 students. Um, French 3 and 4, what happens at those levels, we have to combine the students in order to make a full class. So the, um, there'd be like 12 of one and nine of the other, or four to make 21 and 12 and eight to make that class. Portuguese, we have two sections of Portuguese one, and then one section of the rest of them. We have what we call the Portuguese bubble that rotates through because we have one Portuguese teacher, she can teach at most five classes of 125 students. So the, the request for Portuguese always exceed our capacity to place students in them because of that restriction of the one teacher and the 125 students. So what happens is this year we have the bubble of two Portuguese one classes. Next year we'll have the bubble of two Portuguese two, and then three, and then four, and then it will cycle through again. So all the other sections will be limited to one. So next year we would be restricted to 28 students, um, or whatever, how many students we could have come in to fulfill that 125 for that teacher. So that's a breakdown, you can see of the, the pie chart there of the students in our world language programs. 
So French and um, German are pretty close. However, what we're seeing is um, recently a little bump in the French numbers because we have the career and technical education students coming in from other districts. Some of those districts have a strong French program in the middle school, so those students are coming in to the French two level when they enter our school. It's a very small number, but we are starting to see that effect. Um, so um, I'm going to hand that over to Dr. Humbert to talk about the proposals. No. <laughs> So it, it's very difficult to, you know, we don't have a crystal ball. We're just trying to look at the figures and uh, make some assumptions from uh, from what we discovered. Um, all of us would like to keep everything. Um, we would like to have as many opportunities as we can for the kids. Um, and so we discussed it at length as to what we think would be the most sustainable type of program. And going by... Um, the figures that you just saw um, pr um, uh, presented, we um, feel that Spanish and French and Portuguese are right now um, our strongest languages um, from the data that you saw. What we would like to see happen is in the middle school, we have, as um, uh, Mr. Delucia said, we have um, uh, Spanish 1 being taught daily in grade eight, what we would like to, we talked about, we would like to do is have uh, Spanish one in seventh grade and then Spanish two in eighth grade. But that didn't um, really seem feasible for a lot of different reasons. So we thought if we kept the model the same, especially if we're considering some cost involved, we kept the model the same in the eighth grade, could we at least as a next step open up an exploratory program for grades six and seven. And so um, that would offer the kids some, some type of exposure to language. And we discussed that we could open this up for an awareness and exploratory of three languages, the, the uh, three feeder languages uh, to the high school, which would be Spanish, French, and Portuguese. And we would do this on their elective wheel so it would be two to three times a week, depending on the schedule. You know, if it's an A-B schedule, then it's two times one week, three times another week, um, the following week. And keep Spanish, um, uh, the eighth grade, the same as we have it right now. I mean, obviously, we would like to see more, but we were trying to consider all factors. Did that move? Wait a minute, how do I get rid of our comments? Look up the present. <laughs> there we go, we're on. And so we thought, well, let's look at the elementary and what could we do um, for at least a, a basic program in the elementary. And looking at what a lot of the other districts are doing, we thought, well, could we do something K to five? Maybe not even K to five, but maybe we could do it in grades four and five, you know, whatever would be uh, feasible. This is looking a little bit down the road. Well, both of uh, uh, this slide, the slide, previous slide, um, that's really not effective for next year because all the programming is established um, and our staffing has been established for next year, but it would be the following year. So, um, so anyway, we uh, went with uh, K to five at 40 minutes, and that would be one to two times per week. So we were thinking, you know, could we have one teacher um, who would be an itinerant who could go from um, our five elementary schools? So, uh, you know, one one day would be one elementary, Tuesday would be another elementary, and try to hit as many of those classes, and then. As uh, Mr. Jones was asking about, then maybe we could supplement, and we, we would want to have the direct instruction from a, from a, a world language teacher. But then, could we supplement, like through station rotation, or you know, um, some kind of other learning time, uh, an online program to help the kids? And you know, there's also plenty of apps out there now that are free um, that we could supplement with as well. Okay, and then um, just to give a little bit of uh, perspective, Dr. Moss is going to come back and just kind of do a little bit of um, 
uh, emphasis on the impact for uh, what it does to our teaching staff. So what we looked, because what we were trying to do is project out what would happen if we didn't have the German program, um, or if something were missing, well, how would that impact our numbers? So the retention rates um, for the past three years, uh, Portuguese and French, we also looked at. We looked at all three, Portuguese, French, and German. Um, Portuguese one and French one requests um, surpassed the capacity for the last three years, and the retention rates of the number of students who take Portuguese one and go on to Portuguese two is between 82 and 100 percent. Probably the little bit of gap from the 82 to the 100 percent. Sometimes we are able to put a senior in Portuguese one. They missed out on the first round and they took another language. In their senior year, they find there's an open spot, and sometimes they want to take that Portuguese one. They graduate, they don't go into Portuguese two. But fairly high retention rates in that. French, between 71 and 100% retention rates between levels one and two. And German, um, between 43 and 44% retention rates from German one to German two. So um, looking at this chart, You'll see on 2017-2018, we currently have 44 German 1 students that would be going on to German 2. The gap in that and the slide that was previous are seniors who would be graduating and not going on. So, because um, we do have some seniors taking German 1 this year. So, um, looking at the historical rates of retention at 43 to 44%, looking at how it breaks down in the last Traditionally, the last three years we looked at, 21 of the students would most likely go on to German 2, of the 44 currently taking German 1, and another 34 students would go into German, uh, Spanish 1. They start the Spanish 1, Spanish 2 sequence from there. Um, the German 2 sections would go into the Spanish 1 section, so there would be a bump in the Spanish 1 numbers by about 34 students and there'd be a bump in the, uh, or the retain, retention of German two students, which would be a point two position to sustain that class. That was kind of quick, so if you have any questions, let me know. All right, so financial impact. Um, Spanish one, I, what I did was I took the students, I get the numbers as best I could from the recommendations that have already been made. Students have not yet made choices of classes in the scheduling process, but they have been recommended by teachers. And there have been some discussions, I think, at the middle school about what their preference would be for going on to a language. So getting the numbers from Davisville and Wickford and Jamestown, it looks like we would have about 38 Spanish 1 students coming in from the rising ninth graders coming into the high school, and about 223 Spanish 2 students. French 1, 28, Portuguese 1, 28, Portuguese 2. We don't ever have students start at Portuguese 2 level, so there would be no students coming in at that level. Um, adding to that, the students in grades 10 through 12, including the German 1 students, we would have take another course, or if they wanted to do um, Spanish 1, as following the pattern that normally happens, we'd end up with three sections of Spanish 1. We currently have four, but I put that as a zero change because that's a highly fluctuating number. A lot of the students who sign up for Spanish 2 at this time of the year change their mind over the summer, and they get them a little bit nervous about coming into the high school at a Spanish 2 level. They go into Spanish 1. So we usually find ourselves in the position of having more Spanish 1 students than we had anticipated. Um, 13 sections of Spanish 2 would increase us by three sections. Um, French 1, we would anticipate maintaining one section. And Portuguese 1, because of that bubble, we would drop the section of 1 and add the section of 2 as that bubble from last year moved further. So overall, you can see that um, there's not a significant change when you lose one world language. Students still need to fulfill that world language requirement, so they just shift someplace else on the schedule. Thank you. Dr. Jenkins? Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, Dr. Sorry. 
Do you have more? Or? No, 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 just okay. sort of, if you have questions. Okay, okay. So you all stand up. So, um, you know, I, I just thank you so much for that great comprehensive presentation. Um, you know, some of the questions that have come to me already from school committee members are, you know, about the financial impact of, of doing this, even at the, um, you know, going into the elementary level, going into the middle level deeper than we have before. That That is a goal. And, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it costs more money could mean that if we wanted to, but right now our middle schoolers and our elementary school students are taking a full day of coursework. So whatever this would replace would also replace that level of FTE. And, and just one way to kind of, um, it, it, it could turn out this way, say at the elementary level. Right now students I believe are taking roughly 40 minutes a week of music, they're taking 40 minutes a week of art, and they're taking 40 minutes a week of library. If those three items were 30 minutes a week, there could also be a 30 minutes a week of foreign language instruction, same amount of time, where the itinerant FTEs would be slightly adjusted for those other subjects, um, and slightly increased for the foreign language the overall FTEs and corresponding benefits and everything that goes along with it would be the same. That's one way of doing this. And the same is true for the middle level. Right now, that would not bump into a student taking English, math, social studies, or science, but there are a number of electives that all middle level students take. They're based on a trimester um, basis. Some of them could be full year, some of them could be two-thirds of a year or, or half, or we could shape it any way that we would want. But every student is busy all day. So one of those electives would be incorporated at the grade level that we currently do not have it, and that would be one of the electives that students would now take. So what they wouldn't be taking would be one of the other electives. So there'd be fewer people, say, in a robotic class, a few of people in some other elective that they could have been taking at that time. But that doesn't increase the teaching force. It just means that someone is teaching a foreign language where we used to have someone teaching something else to the same group of kids. So that's that reflection. And, and, the, and, I, and I know a lot of people are here tonight to speak on behalf of the German program, and I appreciate that. And I just want you to know that um, word got out that this was somehow about budget cuts and that sort of thing. That is not the case. This, and this is not, has not been a proposal in my budget. Um, this has to do with just long-term sustainability of the program. And, you know, I'm not trying to pick on any particular foreign language in making this presentation nor are the other, other presenters tonight. We're just looking at the numbers as they are and trying to find a way to make our foreign language experience for students go deeper, be it into the middle level or the elementary level, and be something that we could sustain at the high school level and that we have large numbers of students taking at higher levels. So when you saw that at you know level three and four that we're looking at say 12 students or 14 students in a class, in just about every other elective area at the high school, that class would not run. If it were a business course, we wouldn't run it. We would tell those 12 kids, we need you to take something else because generally speaking, um, just for efficiency's sake, we run classes that are roughly 16 or 17 or better at the high school, and we can't go over 28. And that just makes it worthwhile to run the maximum number of good experience courses for the maximum number of students. That's the way we play it out. And so, in this case, the German is not in a sustainable position as it is right now. And I would say, as we move forward, that if, say, Portuguese or French winds up in a similar position, that we would probably be making the same proposition about those subjects going forward. But right now, even at the higher level, you can run a class with 20 to 26 kids or so. That's a sustainable number. That means that no student gets, gets gypped, basically, 
when they've taken a one or a two, and now they want to take three, and they want to go into an advanced language, and there's only six kids to take the course, and we're not running it. That is a shame. And they're forced to try an online program or something completely different. We don't want that to happen. So the Spanish is the perfect example where because of the volume of kids taking the course that we see, you know, classes of 20 and plus at AP level, at level five, at level four, and that's perfectly sustainable. That's, that's the way we should be for our high school courses and, and you know, the way we budget and, and everything else. It works. If we're any other subject at the school, that class would run. That's what we want to achieve. So we want kids to, to learn language more deeply, and we want them to have a robust and sustainable experience at the high school level. I just want to note for the members, um, we're not making it, there are no votes or anything tonight. This is just a presentation, you know, on, on planning. But uh, questions? Yep. I just had a quick question. Thank you guys for the presentation. That was um, very enlightening. Um, so I guess it looks like if we're going to be introducing Spanish at earlier levels and sort of like a more robust, comprehensive curriculum at earlier levels, um, I would think by the time students are entering high school, that um, there may not even be a need for like a Spanish one eventually. So in that case, how would we continue to still offer like the four years of the Spanish? I mean, does it go up to like a Spanish? Five? Yes, we have two AP Spanish courses. Okay. So if students came into Spanish two, three, we have a Spanish five and we have two AP classes. So students could take a combination of five and then one AP class. Some students go right from Spanish 4 to an AP, so they would do AP um, language, and then the following year, AP literature. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I can just make a quick comment. comment. I, do you mind? Yeah, yeah, comment? Absolutely. Okay. No, you're here for a reason, sir. Okay. <laughs> well, I just didn't know if it was just questions. Yeah. But um, um, I'm from Jamestown, so when I was ultimately deciding where to go to high school, one of the big draws of North Kingstown for me was the language program. Um, the breadth and the depth of it, I think it's really incredible. We have a lot of courses, we have a lot of amazing teachers. Um, I think it's something that, for me, has really been one of the, um, my, uh, my best experience uh, in the high school. So I think that whatever we can do to kind of support um, foreign language, whether that be depth or breadth or whatever we really can do, um, it's a really valuable experience. I think it's helpful. Um, whether you ultimately go on to be fluent or not. Um, I'm lucky this year to be in um, actually the highest level AP Spanish literature course. Um, and it's really a very, really, really good course. And I wish that more people were able to take it because um, instead of kind of, you know, your traditional language things, you know, you actually go and we read poems and we read stories and we read um, all kinds of authentic Spanish literature. So I think that it's a really great program that has broadened my interests in other fields in addition to within Spanish and the culture. So I think whatever we can do to try to support um, the foreign languages within our school is something really important to do. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, just a few things. So um, this is more for clarification, not that I necessarily agree with it, but, um, but I know you mentioned a requirement. There's technically no requirement for language to graduate, correct? Correct. It's, it's a recommendation from colleges what they're looking for. Right. right. And it's, there's no requirement from the state to have a language either, correct? Correct. Yes. It's interesting that the state makes it part of their strategic plan and yet does not put it in their basic education plan, which means they don't have to fund it, yet they want it to be pervasive across the state. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they're cutting districts like us a million five. I find that rather ironic to some extent. Um, to what extent in your research, um, I know you know um, institutes of higher ed, um, but do any of them offer language, and specifically German, through the advanced course network? Not through the ACN. No. And so only through concurrent enrollment, right? Do any offer it as a dual enrollment? What? And, and for a dual enrollment course could be any course that a college allows a student to come take on their campus. Right, but so it, and I guess it, you're right. I guess maybe in a more organized way. And for example, I, I guess I raised the point that um, it's been brought to our attention through several emails, the robust German engineering program at URI. 
yet we can't get URI to even lift the finger to our calls and requests to help with our German program. I, again, find that somewhat astonishing. Um, an institution that received $125 million for its engineering program and wants German engineers and has German companies in our backyard um, somehow can't at least pick up the phone or answer an email to partner with us in German. Um, and none, none of that's your fault. <laughs> I guess I would say to everyone there is um, gladly provide you Dr. Dooley and Provost DeHaze's email if you want to join some of us who keep writing them going, you know, where are you? Where are you in the state? Because we're right next door. Because we're right next door. <laughs> and we want, we, I think, I won't, but I think the superintendent and the administration would love to partner with URI. Um, we'd love for you to be part of the solution if you want to write us and tell us don't cut our German program um, because we are ultimately are facing some budget shortfalls down the road. Um, I, I want to, with um, the other question that um, Raina said, so from, um, from other pathways, since for those, are, are there other potential pathways, for example, us offering German as an ACN, and is there demand in other neighboring districts if we offer German as an ACN course to get some kind of sustainability for that? Is that something when you talk with other districts, do you think they might have students who come to that? Dr. Um, you know, so I, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar, a Advanced Course Network is something that's recently been expanded in the state of Rhode Island. The governor is strong on it. The Department of Ed is strong on it. Um, and that is um, having courses that are taught after school, in most cases, where students from several districts can come together and take something that could not be part of a regular curriculum at any one of those regular high schools. Or maybe it could be, but it's not. they're not able to do it in some of the neighboring communities. So as an after-school program, say, of a Chinese class or something on that idea. And what, what is, is uh, and colleges are certainly capable of doing that as well. So in this case, uh, if there is a contingent of, of students who are demanding German, or any other subject for that matter, and, and URI wanted to be that sponsor of that program, they could do that, and then the 12 students or so that are at an advanced level in North Kingstown could take part in that. Now, this would probably be on their own time, wouldn't be during the school day necessarily, but they'd have that opportunity, and they could fill those seats to get to their capacity to run a course with students from South Kingstown, with Narragansett, and all the neighboring communities around URI, and this could be done in the northern part of the state too, because there are campuses up there too. But um, so there's more of a capability for um, programs like that to exist from colleges that host German studies than high schools where there are very few certified teachers to choose from and to, to sustain. Um, and so far, North Kingstown has been pretty much alone in the state carrying this, and, and the numbers are showing that we're not able to do it sustainably at this point, so. Any other questions on the presentation? Okay. Thank you very much, folks. Our next item, our citizens' comments. Um, I mentioned before there's a sign-up sheet. Uh, anyone who's gonna speak, we do um, ask that you limit your comments to uh, three minutes or less. Um, and uh, school committee members can't respond to questions, so we'll listen to anything that you might have to say. And also, when you come up to the microphone, if you could please state your name and address. Thank you. First is uh, Matthew Blazer. And if I mispronounce anyone's name, I apologize in advance. Hi folks, <coughs> Matt Blazer, 882 Nor uh, 10 Round Road, North Kingstown. Um, my son, uh, Ethan, is a student in German 3 this year. <coughs> it's been a pleasure to see his progress for 
And it's part of a program that's been around for about 40 years. Um, I was a student at NKHS in the late 1980s. German was cut for one year. And when it returned, many of my friends jumped wholeheartedly in, back into the program. Uh, uh, several of them carry into their careers. <clears throat> As an English teacher, I've witnessed um, the fruits of the program and obvious connections such as vocabulary, culture, and history as well as, as the distinct angle from which these students tend to take, uh, sorry, from which these students elect to take, who elect to take German tend to see things. They tend to be creative and open-minded thinkers. They're very valuable in other classes, in the school as a whole, and I venture to say in the larger community, since they make a difficult choice that allows them to see things from a very diff different perspective. Um, under the leadership of the former teacher, Penny Hall, students participated about, for about 15 years in the Mount Holyoke College uh, German Theater Fest, which is still continuing, um, and they garnered recogni recognition for their performances many, many times. And under Frau Baker's direction, students have uh, maintained, as, as, as I'm sure you're aware, a 14-year connection with uh, the, st the school in uh, Burgau, Germany, through the GAP exchanges every other year. Um, and I would just add that no other NKHS pro, uh, language program students have had these long-lasting outreach opportunities, and that's just been a, uh, a thrill to see that, that's that level of, of uh, work. Um, I believe that North Kingstown should do all it can to maintain this program that offers such a distinctive opportunity. It's, it's different. And I recognize that, that the support... Um, I recognize the support of the current high school administration for German. Um, just the fact that we have two sections running this year. I, you know, to me, I was excited to see that. I was I'm really thrilled about, is that three minutes? Uh, no. I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> sorry. I don't have a timepiece. Um, I was really thrilled about the, 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 the opportunities to extend this into the younger grades I've had. As an English teacher, I've seen... Um, Usually, I teach juniors, and as seniors, a number of students have, for uh, several years, tried done projects, senior projects, uh, to try to encourage the school committee and, and the school to think about putting languages in younger grades. And I, I applaud that; it's really exciting to me. I'd like, I'd like to see German be part of that. Um, and, and um, I would just, I would, I would hope that our administration would try to foster growth in the German program, recognizing and, and you know, hearing your your comments. I recognize that 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 desires there. It's provided so much to, to our community and there's, there's, uh, they can offer more in the years to come and I just would encourage that and um, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Next I have Mackenzie Montoya. Thank you, um, Mackenzie Montoya, 31 Lawn Avenue. Um, so North Kingston is actually the last um, public high school in Rhode Island to offer German. Um, there are some private schools that offer it, but um, NK is the last. Um, but this is not the case for the local state colleges. As you may know, the University of Rhode Island has one of the largest German programs and is nationally known for its dual degree program in engineering in German as well as business in German. Um, both Rhode Island College and the Community College of Rhode Island offer language courses. My uncle um, is originally from North Kingstown, um, went through the URI German program, and is now a mechanical engineer in Germany, um, along with two other um, men actually from the same neighborhood in North Kingstown. Um, um, I researched some statistics on Germany um, and gathered information um, from URI and the Dartmouth websites, and I actually have um, five letters in support from different universities, which I'll get to later. Um, Germany is the most populous country in the European Union, and German is the most widely spoken language in the European Union. Um, and I think now with um, North Kingstown offering specializations in robotics, engineering, and business, this wouldn't be the time to eliminate German. Um, Germany has the fourth um, largest national economy and um, is the second most spoken language in the scientific community. Um, Frau Baker has also done a wonderful job with the German exchange program known as GAP, and there is no other language in North Kingstown that offers an exchange program, and I think that being immersed in the language is the only way to truly learn and understand um, the language. So I'm just going to read some letters in support. Just, I just want to remind you, we keep it to three minutes, so if you... If you have a whole bunch. Oh, or, it's just, okay. just excerpts from okay. some. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. You can hand us anything you'd like. Okay. Thanks. Don't mean to interrupt. Okay. Um, 
So from the Rhode Island Foreign Language Association, um, Dr. Aaron Papa states that um, the organization works to grow their own language teachers for current and future needs for public schools. And the Rhode Island Foreign Language Association can also help to facilitate recruitment of language teachers from outside of Rhode Island. Um, as the Rhode Island affiliate of the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages, um, the Rhode Island Foreign Language Association is well connected to educators across languages throughout the country, and they would be happy to circulate a posting to their networks to help hire a new German teacher. Thank you. And then just one more. Um, this is from Ro Roger Williams University, and it says, um, from Dr. Anthony Hollingsworth, says, um, personally, I think it would be better to consider how being the only um, high school to offer German in the state is an asset to the community and begin marketing as, as such instead of regarding it as a liability. Thank you very much. And I also have, oh, I yep, also have the letters. Sure, uh, if you can give them to our clerk, she can yeah. make sure we get copies of things. Thank you. Christine Trask. My name is Christine Trask. I live at 94 Laurel Ridge Lane, and I'm both a mother here as well as a pediatric neuropsychologist, and I under some, understand something about cognition and children's development. And German is the only non-romance language that's offered here at the high school, and this really helps develop analytic thinking in children, which is different from some of what the other languages offer. From a cognitive perspective, this can also um, help involve in, um, increase multitasking s skills and memory and mental flexibility. Um, and as has already been stated, if we're thinking about us as a global community and how language is supposed to contribute to a global community, we want to think about what does that global community need. They are looking for German. They're not looking so much for those other languages. 68% of Japanese students take German. Um, this is the language that's strong in business and in engineering, and North Kingstown is investing in their CTE programs. They advertise the CTE programs but they don't make the connection to the languages and how, how education in German would help those students go on in business and go on in engineering with that specific language as their background. Um, in particular, one of the schools in California actually talks about what languages they recommend for their majors to have, and German is the most common language that they recommend over Spanish, over French. When we look at Massachusetts in terms of what languages are offered at the high schools in Massachusetts, 35 Massachusetts high schools are offering <coughs> German. Again, they're recognizing the importance of this in the global community. Um, and the impact for college, too, as we think about this, it, it really is where are they going, not just URI, but out in the world. And a number of the programs now are doing these specialized German and engineering programs. So it's not just URI that's developing that. It's also at the University of Georgia, the University of Maryland, the University of Arkansas, and Boston University. So it's something that makes the students very attractive. And again, they're looking for at least four years of the language to really come into those programs with a strong background. Um, and the other thing I think to keep in mind is with the German program, the way it's structured, there's a benefit to these small class sizes, and you have to understand what happened over the last three years. Why are there so few German three students? My son is a German three student, his freshman year, he was told, no more German, pick another language. So even students that were thinking about German that freshman year, most of them chose a different language because they didn't know if they would be able to get their four years of language. So only the strongest stuck it out and hung in there. And that's why you see that dip in enrollment. If you look at 48 students in German 1 and compare that to last year, how many students you had in German 1, that's an increase compared to last year, not a decrease. So what you're seeing is how you're marketing German to your school community, not what the students are deciding to stay with. And that's what I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Lenore Martin. Hi, I'm Lenore Martin. This doesn't work. Uh, it does. It just doesn't through the seal. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm Lenore Martin, 40 uh, Webb Avenue. The rest of the world. Yeah, just so that they have a recording of what I say. It's strange life. 40 Webb Avenue. <laughs> uh, my daughter Leah is also in German 3, and um, I have to say that um, 
I'm married to a language teacher who teaches Hebrew and, and Spanish and uh, Hebrew and, and uh, Japanese. Um, and I'm pretty familiar with language issues. Um, but uh, and and Leia was 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 in a dual enrollment or dual immersion program for the first five years in a Jewish school of Rhode Island in Hebrew and English. Um, and I I know what it takes to become fluent in a language. Um, and I'm willing to do whatever I can to make sure that my daughter has access to that. I think it's an essential part of an education. It's, it's uh, pretty much being able to communicate in other languages with other people is, is a really important part of today's world. I'd also like to just mention I'm also a professor at the University of Rhode Island in the Department of Cell and Molecular Biology, which runs the Biotechnology Manufacturing Program. Um, I've also been very experienced with a lot of the biomedical engineering students in the German, International German Engineering Program. And these are two of the strongest scientific programs at URI, among many others that use languages. And we've just recently added the Chinese flagship. And I see more and more, despite Google Translate, how important uh, fluency in a second language, or at least competency, where you can read a newspaper or a journal article in another language is so important. And um, I was so excited when Leah got a chance to go to Germany as an exchange student. It was um, just uh, a wonderful experience. When I myself was in high school in Chicago, I went to France as an exchange student. And when I came back, my fluency had increased so much um, just from a three-week stay. Um, it's just incredible what that immersion does, and it also motivates them to study during the school year. And I think it would be, there's a whole culture of German activities and, you know, celebrations, and, and, and um, I agree with the last speaker that my daughter was frightened that she would not be able to study German. And, and seriously, um, for teenage girls, uh, they don't want to be like the only one doing anything. And she was really worried that they were going to cancel the German program, and she was so relieved that she and her friends could take German. And, um, you know, as, as a URI professor, I just say that we, we, I'm also in the faculty senate, we just passed a resolution. It, it is required to have two years of language study minimum to be accepted at the University of Rhode Island. They will not even look at your application unless you, so whether or not you have to have it to graduate from high school, uh, our state colleges will not admit you uh, if you don't have two years of language study. So um, just wanted to mention that since you brought it up. Uh, but the bottom line is that um, if you want students to really grow and develop as scientists, German is an excellent choice. I, I, I studied French. I had to pass a German ex exam at UCLA to get my PhD. And I could not graduate with my doctorate until I had passed a German exam. Um, it just testifies if you're, if you're interested, as a former person said, I forgot to set my alarm, so I'm probably over time, but about. German <laughs> is essential for science and engineering. And, and I have lived with Google Translate. It doesn't do it well enough. You need to have some familiarity with the language to be able to make the most of it. So I just would hope that as your students will be coming to be our students, that you will encourage them to keep the German program. And I think your model of the Portuguese program where you, if you have a bubble of freshmen taking German this year, then you should follow that bubble through. And if you don't have, you know, we do this at URI. We have the same budget problems you guys have. If a course is under-enrolled, we cancel it. And then we just offer it the next semester and they wait a semester. Uh, that's reality. But to cancel the whole program because you have a dip in enrollment, I think, is short-sighted. So, Thank you. Is, uh, Shelby McIntosh. So we don't have to give you Dr. Dooley's email. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you get to the German department. I will make sure that they call you. Shelby McIntosh, 601 Pender Road, North Kingstown. Um, I'm a senior at North Kingstown High School. I'm currently in AP Spanish Literature with Josh. Um, Ms. Daniel Liberty is our teacher, and I'm very lucky to have gotten the point I'm at in my language. I am absolutely thrilled with what has come out of it. I've learned so much more about the culture. I actually got the chance to travel to Spain this summer on um, the EF Tours trip that was sponsored through the high school. It was an absolutely amazing experience, and I truly felt my language grow even more. However, I came from Wickford Middle School. I started in the eighth grade, and it took quite a bit of work outside of school in order to reach AP Spanish Literature. Um, I went into Spanish 2, although many 8th graders do go into Spanish 1 because they are worried about 
whether or not they'll really have the material to go into Spanish too. And um, for my senior project, I decided I don't want more kids to feel like that. Um, I want to promote elementary school foreign language education, whether that be Spanish or another language, although I do feel, considering our programs at the high school, that Spanish is a very good choice. And um, going into Spanish, if you come from a, uh, a middle school like I did, you do have to jump through a lot of hoops. I had to teach myself, well, Mr. Liberty helps, but um, teach yourself a lot of the content of Spanish 3. We went from Spanish 1, or Spanish 2, freshman year, I went into Spanish 3 honors my sophomore year, skipped Spanish 4 completely, I went into AP Spanish my junior year, and now I'm in AP Spanish literature. It was a lot of material to cover, and stuff that I feel still feel very uncertain about now, and I wish I'd known a lot more. Um, furthermore, I conducted a survey as part of my senior project, and I surveyed about 100 students at NK. I tried to get it to be pretty broad. I got about 30% seniors, 30% sophomores, and then 20, or almost 30% um, uh, juniors, not a lot of freshmen. They weren't really into it. But um, <laughs> what I got was that 90% of the kids that I surveyed wish they had started earlier, and the 10% who didn't correlate exactly with the 10% who had already started in elementary school because they hadn't gone to NK for their elementary school years. So overall, I'd just like to um, go along with the foreign language uh, uh, department's presentation and say that I really wish that we'd start in elementary school. It would be absolutely amazing to the students now. And with the German department, if we had started in elementary school, more people would be able to reach these higher levels before they even reach high school. And therefore, students could opt to take German, French, Portuguese, or another language if we were able to expand our department that far um, in their high school years because they had reached such a high level in their middle school years. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Caitlin Sutton. <laughs> Hello, my name is Caitlin Sutton, and I live in 220 Tower Hill Road. Um, I am a senior at North Kingsdown High School, and I'm in the National Honor Society and have been in the German program for the last four years of my life. Sorry, I'm emotional. Um, I'm also secretary of a German club. I could not even picture in my high school. I don't know why I'm emotional. I'm sorry. Um, I could not even picture my high school life without this program. Um, this is why I'm speaking here today. For the first time, I feel so passionate about something that I actually want to stand up and talk and have my voice be shown. Okay, sorry. Okay. I am very nervous to talk right now. Um, public speaking is not something I usually do in my life. Um, okay. And that just shows how much I love this program. Um, I will be graduating in June, but I want people to be able to experience the same joy that I, I could experience in this program. I was able to have one of the most ex amazing experiences by going on the GAP program. I got to experience someone live in my house for three weeks and get such an amazing connection with them and also travel to Germany and learn so much. And if they can't do that, then I don't know why it's a sad thing. It, it was such a big part of my life that I even wrote my college essay on it. One college even ex accepted me and said that they wanted to experience the German exchange program and they thought it would be such an amazing experience to the campus that they would love to experience and hear about from their point of view. Um, I have it printed now on the back of my acceptance letter if you guys want it to. Okay. Um, I don't plan on going to that college, but it's still <laughs> <laughs> um, The German program uh, also gave me a home that I needed in school when there's so much com um, competition around here. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. I was able to be myself and enjoy so much experience. I got to like meet all these people in this room. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just want you all to know that I will be truly sad if you can't tell if this program <laughs> dies. <laughs> Taking this course was honestly the best decision I have ever made in my life. And I just, I don't have enough words to describe it. If Rob Baker wasn't a teacher, I probably wouldn't be a part of this GAP program. And I probably wouldn't have had that time and experience that I actually had. My sister also was a part of the program, and she and she still talks about it today, even though she's graduated it from five years ago. Uh, the, Frau Baker also gave me this yearbook from the gap trip that we took, 
where they have all these experiences that they wouldn't have been able to experience if they didn't come and we didn't have this program. Like, they got to experience Halloween in America. Like, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> I even was able to go to Paris, a place that I've only dreamed about going because I was able to go on this German program. I just think that if you get rid of it, then people won't be able to experience this like I have experienced, and I don't think that is fair. Sorry, and thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next we have uh, Theodore, is it Gerard? Gerard, yeah. yeah thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Theodore Gerard, 104 Talkwatton Farm Road, NK. I'm a sophomore at NKHS. I'm in my second year of German, and when I heard about this meeting, I felt obligated to come and talk to you about why I feel it's necessary for the high school and for students. When I was in middle school, I jumped at the opportunity to take German. I just have always wanted to, and when I learned that I could, I definitely wanted to do that, especially when I learned I could take it with the engineering program. And I feel that the German program offers so many unique opportunities that so many other languages don't, that it just allows students who take it to grow and develop differently than any other language. Especially with things like German Night and the GAP program, where you can go to Germany and experience their culture and learn so many different things, it's allowed me to grow and develop and I feel like that's the point of a school, is to allow students to grow and develop skills that they're going to need to be successful later in life. And to me, that's what the German program offers. Thank you. Thank you. Michael, is it Jung? The German speakers in here can pronounce that. I am not one of them. <laughs> so, my name is Michael Junga. I live at 39 Dory Street, Jamestown, Rhode Island, and it has been wonderful, and I have nothing prepared. <laughs> it has been wonderful to hear people speak in support of the program. It being the Ides of March, I'm going to spin things around a little bit and speak somewhat against the administration. My daughter's a freshman. She had three years, and she loves that I pointed her out. She had three years of Spanish coming here. She could have easily gone into Spanish one, gotten the easy A, continued through the great feeder that's set up to provide a very sustainable program. Instead, she chose the family language. Her grandmother is a now retired German and French speaker. I minored in German when I went to college. She loved the idea of German. We also had an expectation she'd be able to do this as part of her academic career through high school in the high school for all four years. If German goes away next year, or if she's expected to do it outside of high school, as Dr. Auger mentioned on at least, I think, three occasions, that'll be the second of the three reasons why she came to this high school that have gone away. The other being the very abrupt notice that European AP history would no longer be an AP subject. So the issue I have is that so many decisions are being made that affect my child's education and her long-term education that are being so poorly communicated to us before the decision's made and then when the decision has been made. My understanding, it hasn't been mentioned here yet, that Ruth Ann Baker is retiring this year. That's an important part of this conversation but has not yet been raised. Your German program, our German program, for all practical purposes, is dead right now. And I've not heard anything talking about what's being done to fix it, to bring it back, to keep up the promise made to these students that they could do this for four years. Coming from Jamestown, we have a choice. They have to choose where they go to high school. Ella chose this high school for three reasons. One of them's already gone, one is threatened, and band is all that keeps her here at North Kingston High School. Depth of language is important, but the depth in forcing people into one language, because that's the only language that you're offering with depth, does not provide the education that students need. They should have some choice in their education. And if you want a sustainable program for language, you provide a broad program that feeds from the schools beneath it, rather than choosing one language that you hang all your hopes on. Thank you. Thank you.
the end of the uh, sign-up list. If there's anyone else who wants to speak and hasn't signed up, you can come to the microphone. If you could also just please, uh, oh, you can, <laughs> you can uh, please state your name and your address. Please. Okay, my name is Ali Allison Hornung, and uh, my address is 10 Gateway Road, North Kingstown. So I just came back three weeks ago from a six-month exchange program in Germany. Um, my first uh, years at North Kingstown High School, I did take Spanish. It's a great program, but I took Spanish because it was offered in the middle school. And I understand that it would be really difficult to put other languages into the middle school and elementary school, but I just wanted to point that out. That's why I took Spanish, because I was prepared to take Spanish. And German seemed really intimidating, and that is a common stereotype going into the high school, that German is the hardest language in the high school. So going to Germany in September, I didn't have any, really any knowledge of the German language. And coming back, I'm conversationally fluent. Um, every country I visited during my exchange in Europe, I was able to speak fluent German, and everyone was able to understand what I was saying. Um, I also wanted to point out, it was brought up that um, the, this, our German program offers a gap exchange. And that is extremely important. I am actually doing my senior project also on the benefits of like, being an exchange student. And coming back from exchange, I can testify and say that you are extremely more motivated. And I actually researched that there's an 100% chance that your GPA will improve after being an exchange student. And I can also testify to that. I'm way more motivated to go to school than before I left. The Ger and German <laughs> school is way harder than American school. Um, so that definitely motivated me a lot. And to know that if the, I came back and I'm in German for honors and I am learning how to communicate with my best friends better because of this program. And if I didn't have this program to come back to, I'm also making a double major at URI in business in German, then I would lo lose over six months of language that I need to know to talk to my best friends. And I just think that's extremely, extremely important considering in Europe, the, one of the largest stereotypes about Americans that I notice is that we are monolingual. So I would just like to point that out and thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, raise their hand, yes. Good evening. My name is Lynn Gamwell. I don't live in North Kingstown. I live in Richmond, Rhode Island. My daughter is in the CTE program at North Kingstown High School. She's in business and finance. Of course, that's a strong draw in and of itself, but of course, also North Kingstown offers a fa fantastic um, music, theater, and arts program, as well as the, fine, uh, the language program. She's coming from Meadowbrook Waldorf School, which is in um, Kingston, Rhode Island. Um, at Meadowbrook Waldorf School, they do um, German in the grades first through eighth. And they do send a fair number of students, well actually a fair number of North Kingstown students go to Meadowbrook Waldorf School, come back to North Kingstown for high school. Um, and I have brought with me a letter from the administrator, at the head administrator at Meadowbrook Waldorf School in support of the German program here at North Kingstown High School. It's also from the German teacher at Meadowbrook Waldorf School. So it'll just take a minute. To whom it may concern, at the Meadowbrook Waldorf School we offer German beginning in grade one and all children receive two hours of German instructions a week through eighth grade. Two years ago our seventh graders were invited to work in collaboration with your German program and perform plays and German music for each other. In previous years our respective German programs proudly represented Rhode Island at the German Theater Fest at Mount Holyoke College together. We send a significant number of graduates to NK High School every year. Our parents will be disappointed for their children to not have the opportunity to continue German in the future if this is the case. With your outstanding music, theater, and German programs, your school has been a perfect match for our NK graduates. We do hope you will continue this program. Thank you for your consideration. Anna Duda, German teacher, Jennifer Farrelly, administrative, head administrator at the Meadowbrook Waldorf School. And I have copies of the letter. If you I can, can submit those, please. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. 
Hi, um, my name is Treza Bulberg. Um, I live in um, 24 Norman Road, Jamestown, Rhode Island. Um, my, I was born in Ma um, Boston, Massachusetts, and my parents are both from Slovakia. And so I speak um, Slovakian and English. Um, my parents, when I was little in the household, I have five sisters and two brothers, spoke Slovakian to my family. And I learned 90% um, of Slovakian. So now I can speak most of it and understand what my parents are talking about or when I'm talking to relatives in Slovakian because obviously they don't know English. <laughs> so it was very helpful that um, they spoke to me when I was little and I think it clicked because of um, being so young and being around that much language, like different language because English is always my first language but learning Slovakian at that like age when I was little like really helped obviously now that I like know how to speak it. Um, I started um, Spanish in eighth grade at Wickford Middle School and I took it my freshman, my sophomore, and my junior year. But Spanish didn't click as much as Slovakian did as when I was little. And I wish that I was able to take Spanish at a younger age because now it was um, harder to decide whether I wanted to take it my senior year because I just had a really hard time with Spanish throughout my high school. So I just wanted to say that I wish I took it at a younger age. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? You, you went already, yeah. sir. You only yeah, can you go once. <laughs> you, you can only speak once, though. This is, this is a letter. For, can I just? This is you a letter can hand it in to our clerk. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Sorry. This is, letter, this is a letter from another parent who could not be here tonight. Okay. okay. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. We'll, we'll get it. All right. Okay. If that is all, uh, can we'll can. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see a hand. Yep. Again, if you could just speak your name and address. Uh, uh, my name is Lynn Fontaine. I live at 75 Juniper Drive. And my daughter is a sophomore here. And um, my son will be coming next year as a freshman. And um, my husband wrote a letter because he um, graduated from URI with the uh, dual um, major of German and engineering. And uh, I'll be like the girl over there. <laughs> Um, so he says, Dear members of the North Kingstown School Committee, recently I learned of the consideration to eliminate the German program from the NK Senior High School. This decision appears to be, well, I'll skip that part. Um, first, a little bit about my background relative to German language studies. My German language studies began as a freshman at, the, at URI while enrolled in the mechanical engineering program. What first attracted me to learning German was my previous struggles in Spanish while I was in high school. During orientation, I learned how logic-oriented the German language was, which appealed to my learning style. I continued my German studies, graduating with a degree in both German and mechanical engineering, and later in my academic career while working on my PhD in engineering at Brown, I was reminded again of the importance of German language in the international community. This time it was relative to the field of applied mathematics and the number of journal articles published in the German language. As a practicing engineer, I am constantly reminded of the importance of all the European languages and cultures, especially German, in the business world during meetings with companies and representatives of their governments. The cultural understanding I gained while studying German at URI prepared me well for such interactions. The German program at NK is structured around cultural immersion given the students an appreciation and context to help them learn. Although probably not apparent to all, this cultural experience and exposure to new ideas resonates through the halls of NK. This is especially true during their carnival celebration each October. And this is a prime example of diversity, which I know is central to the NK curriculum and the GAP program offered students a unique opportunity furthering all aspects of Germany. This is a great experience for the entire NK. Um, and he submit to the committee that the low enrollment in German program is due in large part to missed opportunities based on my experience with the German program 
I find many similarities and opportunities afforded to the NK students compared to the URI International Engineering Program. The IEP at URI is internationally recognized as a model program. Similarly, the NK is the only such program in the state, and a partnership between the NK High School Engineering and the URI program should be explored. Reflecting back to when <coughs> our daughter registered, there was no mention of the German program. It was just recommended to take Spanish and um, also he emailed to like around five o'clock saying something about um, that he reached out to URI and because um, there's a, like 80 year old woman who lives in North Sound and she, I don't remember if she gave money to URI or but he just recently found a connection that could maybe help. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Um, one more? Yep. Or another? Yep. Thank you very much. Sure. Again, name and address, please. Yes. Dr. Peter Trask, 94 Laurel Ridge Lane in North Kingstown, and I am married to the previous speaker, did a wonderful job. I wanted to ask sort of a non-rhetorical question, though, to start, um, and it's more of a poll. And it comes from the fact that there seems to be a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy here. And the parallel is with automatic cars and standard cars. So, anybody drive standard? Ah, must be German. <laughs> Close enough, right? The self-fulfilling prophecy is that people drive automatics now because they don't make standards. Well, they don't make standards because people decided in the automobile industry that nobody was driving them. The point here is that you've got a sword of Damocles that is hung over the German program now for three years. If you come in knowing that it could be cut, why would you do it? I personally continue to seek out standards because it's something that I think is a skill. Certainly the parallel to German for me is working in a business where half of my company is based in Europe. I'm at a distinct disadvantage by not knowing that language. So to have two sons that are having that experience and being able to come out of high school knowing a language that is readily usable in the economics, business, and engineering space is amazing. To think about removing it just sends a wrong message. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? I just have a question. Well, we can't really answer questions. It's a citizen's comment period. You can send us to the administration an email. We can answer a question for you. Okay, sorry, thanks. Anyone else? Okay, um, so uh, next item on our agenda is the superintendent's report, Dr. O'Shea. Uh, I'm, I'm good, thank okay. you. Okay, um, so uh, we've reached routine items. Um, first, if I could have a motion to seal the executive session meeting minutes of March 13th, 2018. Wait, that's wrong. That's, oh, we forgot to change the dates. Yes. So. Due to the change in our meeting date, that's off. It's the executive session meeting minutes of March 15, 2018. So moved. Second. Motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I could disclose that no votes were taken in the executive session this evening on March 15, 2018. Um, consent agenda. Um, I'm going to exempt um, item B because I think we had some uh, one and two. We had some absent members and also D12. Anyone else have anything they'd like to exempt? Yep. I don't know if it's worth mentioning that there is not a vote. Uh, I mentioned it before, but I can say it again. There, I don't know if people are waiting for There's that. no there vote on no any of this now or, right. or scheduled. This was just a presentation regarding the future of languages in North Kingston. So if you're waiting anxiously to see what happens, none of this has <laughs> well, You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to just wait and see what happens, but it's not about this. So, about yeah, yeah, we're not voting on uh, thanks. I didn't realize people were staying for that. Just a presentation and planning session. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have uh, exempted 
D1 and 2 and D12, any other exemptions? I'd ask for a motion to approve the remaining consent agenda items. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. And I'm going to wait a minute to let the crowd file out. Business while the noise is going on. <laughs> I, I can go with this background. Um, so the exempted items are item B, 1, and 2. Um, I'll have a motion to approve B, 1, and 2. Motion, Mr. Jones. Second. Second, Ms. Stevens. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And abstentions from Ms. Hoskins and Ms. McGovern. Uh, next, we have item D12. Um, just because there were some people who were able to get paperwork in, uh, I'm going to add. Um, so I just need to add names, right? There are already, yeah, okay, just want to make sure. The, uh, in addition to the items that were in the packet, we have some additional coaches uh, that would be included in the approval of this item, which are Arthur Teft, head softball coach, Liv Scott, head track coach, and Joseph Brooks, assistant boys baseball coach. So if I could have a motion to approve D12 with those additions. Motion is Hoskins. Second. Second is Stevens. Uh, any discussion? Yes, Mr. Jones. I would. So, um, I guess more comment, but um, first of all, I'd like to thank the superintendent um, and all those who um, answered questions um, and more clarified the whole coaching approval process, um, all the paperwork that goes through it. Um, I've been on the committee too long now, five years, and um, this has been a repeated issue about some of this, and I guess my point is going, you know, it's a, obviously we appreciate that people take their time and effort and probably don't compensate them quite enough for all they do as coaches, um, but our student athletes, when a person agrees to coach, are counting on you for the start of the season to be totally certified to coach and prepared to coach and all those good things that come with it. Um, and so I would hope that um, sometimes what we hear is the paperwork delay or something, um, while that sometimes happens, that um, our coaches who agree to do this understand that there are these paperwork and it's not a quick process and that um, you know we're doing everything we can to get those in on time so our student athletes are jammed up at the start of seasons. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, and we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor of approving item D12? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes unanimously. Um, next, we have uh, item P, which is the approval of the 2018-19 school committee meeting schedule. This was all circulated. I didn't get any comments or problems. so. Um, if I could get a motion to approve that item. So moved. Motion, Ms. Stevens. Second. Second, Ms. Huskins. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Next, uh, item F, which is the school committee approval of the Omni 403B retirement plan documents. I'm sure you all read them every word. <laughs> Very exciting stuff. <laughs> Can I have a motion? Explain the clause on page <laughs> I bet you my controller could. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion to Stevens. Second. Second, Mr. Jones. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? Passed unanimously. Next, we have the approval of a booster club donation. Um, does anyone just speak briefly on that? Just anyone? All right, I, I can. The, yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to put um, you on the spot. The I just, the well, I know. It's just when I get a donation, I, I, I like to give a little recognition for it. So sorry, um, I can jump. I know too. part of the donation has to do with uh, scoreboards. Yep. So let me jump I just know, so I can. Uh, it, I can read a little bit more. So um, the uh, North Kingstown Booster Club has graciously purchased a 70-inch interactive touch wall of fame, uh, as well as two Dactronic 4x8-foot basketball scoreboards and two 30-second wall-mounted shot clocks. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, thank you folks for the hard work that you do uh, and uh, uh, the donation, because uh, 
service. Very appreciated. So if I could have a motion to approve item uh, G. A motion and a second. Uh, so it's Ms. Hoskins, Ms. McGovern. Any discussion? Other than thank you again. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Uh, next we have item H, which is the approval of the Athletic Hall of Fame inductees. If I could have a motion to approve, item H. I have a motion, Ms. Huskins, second, Ms. McGovern. Any discussion? Mr. Jones. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, well, first of all, I um, want to say congratulations to all our inductees. Um, it's a great recognition. Um, that's one of the reasons we need the wall-mounted thing is because we've run out of room. Um, but if it's going to be like the one that's at Bryant, that's going to be really cool um, and a good thing. Um, one of the reasons I want this on the agenda, really two reasons. One is I think it's important we sort of lift the recognition of this a little bit to the extent um, we do. Um, and, and just raise the idea related to this. Um, I think the Athletic Hall of Fame is good that maybe we start considering kind of a larger alumni recognition um, for great contributors, you know, that not only athletics, but public service and academics as well. Maybe we start thinking of a holistic kind of, of hall of fame or whatever you want to call recognition um, that recognizes either our graduates or, or great um, friends of North Kingstown School District. Um, in the future. Maybe we'll have to get two TVs down the road for all our great scholars and public contributors too. So, um, but congratulations to all those folks who made it and now instead of a bus, they'll also get their big 70 inch mug <laughs> shot. Okay. Uh, Can I just take that one? I'm sorry? Can I just take that one? We, we have 76 at Doug Gee, so it's a very proud list there. If you look at the to listen to the program, you know, and a lot of them are townspeople, you know, on, on top of athletes. We do what we do um, induct townspeople also. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Shea. I was just going to say congratulations to all the inductees. I'm really not so sure about that Elizabeth Beisel. I'm really not sure what she's done <laughs> to, to She's on the borderline, this. I guess. <laughs> so, you know, that was a tough call, but we're really glad she uh, she made it. So. Um, and uh, so uh, we have a motion and a second, I believe. I sorry, I got the yep, okay. Motion and a second. Don't want to miss that. I've done that before. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, next is item I, which is the approval of the school committee contract continuation resolution. Um, if I could have a motion to approve item I. Motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Second, Mr. Governor. Second, Mr. Jones. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Um, so we move on to unfinished business. Anything on the 2017-18 school budget? 2018-19 school budget? CIP existing bond or future bond? I just have a question. Mr. Jones. Jones. When, when's the town meeting? Oh, oh, you know what? We should talk about that, shouldn't we? Yeah. The town um, budget meeting for the school department is Monday, the 19th. It's at 5.30. And I will confirm with you, I believe it's going to be at the Town Hall 100 Fairway Drive in that little room there. I'm pretty sure oh, that's yeah. where we were last year. But I'll check with Jeanette on that tomorrow. Um, so 5.30 Monday night. We'll be there. And it's... I told that to all the chairman. And, and uh, <laughs> I will um, send an email to the community about all of the things of upcoming budget meetings. So people are aware. Okay. Yeah, because the next one after that is April 9th or something, which is the actual public hearing. Right. Um, good reminder, thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, C two. And C? Well, just my question is, um, for November 2018, do we have a deadline with the General Assembly, General Assembly that we, the town Oh, for a bond to, referendum? Yeah, yeah I, I've consider. heard kind of a lot of dates about that, but I thought that the General Assembly needs to approve that by the end of June, so yeah. I'm not I'm not really sure. And then we, the um, well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. So um, I, I contacted the town manager about that, um, and it will be a topic for discussion on Monday night as well. We'll remind the them, and, and you know, I would think that sometime in April, I'm assuming we would 
have to have some kind of consensus from them and the school committee. Yeah. One yeah. of our yeah. items is the Eagles. high school athletic complex. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Don't right. let the town council forget the right. deadlines. The general assembly mm -hmm. has to allow the town to yes. 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 The town has to allow us to do this, then the and general the assembly has to allow the, the town. town. And then the yeah. voters have to approve. And that also has to be done on a timeline to get on the ballot. I mean, they don't, I, I don't think the General Assembly has said no to a town, but it is a formality. They have to allow the town to be able to incur the debt. It, it's pretty much a formality, but June, they, they recess in June. Right. By the middle to the well, end of June, know. it has to be done right. by then. Right. And April is in 16 days, in case anybody was wondering. Please don't tell me that. <laughs> Uh, so next we have uh, revised policy regarding uh, controlled substances and alcohol testing. If I the, oh, yeah, this policy is just there were some federal changes. So mm -hmm. the policy did not go through the policy subcommittee. It was just some federal changes. We knew we had to make the trustees look at it. So that's really all that is. So it's an update to that. So if I could have a motion to approve item D1. So move. Uh, call that a tie. Uh, <laughs> Ms. McGovern, I'll give it to. Do I have a second? Second. Second goes to Ms. Hoskins. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, then we have uh, reports. Any questions on the special reports, disposal and enrollment, or the financial reports? If not, we have reached the end of our agenda. I would ask for a motion to adjourn. I have a motion. I have a second. Uh, Mr. Hoskins, second. Mr. Jones, all those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you folks for coming. And you get free season tickets because you were here when the game ended. It's like the Paw Sox game. I love you, I love you all right one. <laughs> they did, sir. That was, that, was a, that was a great day. Yeah. 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 Yeah.